US non-farm payrolls data for May shows 175,000 jobs were added in May and unemployment rose to 7.6%. Could this trigger the Federal Reserve to end QE sooner? Hugh Johnson, economist at Hugh Johnson Advisors, joins me on the line to tell us more. Hugh, what do you think of the NFP data and do you think this will influence the Fed to shut its QE program sooner? I think if you look at the numbers, 175,000 jobs added to payrolls is a good number. It's a little bit better than I'd expected. It's a little bit better than the consensus expected. The consensus was around 165,000. I don't think it's a strong enough number to uh, cause the Federal Reserve to begin to reduce its uh, purchases of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. I don't think it's going to cause any change in uh, QE3. So I think the Federal Reserve will continue to buy securities in the market and continue to try to put downward pressure on interest rates until we see, uh, oh, three or four months of consecutive gains that are 200,000 or higher. I don't think the Federal Reserve is inclined or is likely to change its current policy. But as you know, U.S. unemployment for May climbed to 7.6% from 75 What do you think of this? And do you think this could take away the shine from the positive U.S. NFP figures out today? No, no, you know, you take a look at it. It's disappointing, obviously, to see the unemployment rate rise to 76 from 7.5%. But the principal reason that it rose was that we had a fairly significant increase in the labor force a lot of uh, a lot of folks that were looking for jobs and become disappointed and stopped looking for jobs uh, started looking again and re-entered the labor force and i think based on that they're re-entering the labor force um we had an increase in the uh, unemployment rate because we weren't able to absorb all of those uh, all of those additions to the labor force but that's not necessarily a bad thing uh, it's it's not a bad thing because it shows at least some optimism that at least in time some people believe that by entering the labor force, they will find jobs. So uh, I look at that as disappointing, but not necessarily bad news. And how do you think today's job data will impact market sentiment and investor confidence? I, th- I think that it's, it's actually in some ways almost the perfect number because it's a better number than most of us had been expecting. It's very consistent with the idea that the U.S. economy continues to expand, but at a somewhat slow pace, but nevertheless expand but it's not so strong a number that it's going to raise a lot of worries about the Federal Reserve changing policy or ending its current policy of buying treasuries and mortgage-backed securities and keeping downward pressure on longer-term interest rates. So it's, let's call it the perfect number. It's better than expected, but not so strong as to cause the Federal Reserve to start to lean towards restraint, and that's very good news for the stock market. So I think, you know, you have to take a look at this number and say, is it going to Is it going to in any way disenchant or reduce confidence or disenchant investors? And I think the answer is no, it's not going to stop the bull market. If anything, it'll it'll help the bull market along. Hugh, do you think today's data signals the U.S. is on the road to recovery? I think the U.S. has been on the road to recovery for a long time. It's since June, June, basically. I guess you have to be technical and say maybe October of 2009. We've had starts and stops along the way or periods when the U.S. economy has certainly slowed and the recovery has been anything but strong by post-war standards. It's been very anemic, but nevertheless, it's been a recovery. We've continued to see job gains, even though we haven't seen job gains that are anywhere near to what we might call normal for this stage of a recovery. But it is a recovery, but it's a slow recovery as we you know, continue to slug through the deleveraging process. We continue to eliminate all those excesses, and I really mean debt, that was built up during the uh, during the 2004-2005 housing mania. So we still have the overhang from that mania, which is keeping economic growth slow. But nevertheless, we are recovering. And lastly, how do you think this will affect the dollar going forward? Well, I think the dollar, you know, on balance is, uh, is really going to be positive. Uh, I mean, there there is a general expectation or belief that with uh, the Federal Reserve threatening or possibly beginning to taper its purchases, not now, but maybe at some future date, that we'll start to see upward pressure on interest rates. And that will, of course, be helpful to the dollar. So I would think it would be helpful to the dollar. And as such, it's going to attract capital to the U.S. markets and be a positive. So on balance, I think it's positive. Other other countries around the world or other regions around the world, such as Europe, as uh, obviously Japan and China have a different issue 
and they have to keep downward pressure on rates and downward pressure on their currencies because their economies are not doing as well. This, the U.S. economy, really, when I take a look at the global economy, is, the, is still the primary driver and is doing a little bit better than we see in other parts of the world. Although I will, will add only one thing, that Europe might surprise everybody in the second half of this year and start to recover. And that, of course, would be a pleasant surprise, but a big surprise. That's all for now, but stay tuned to Dukascopy TV for the latest financial news and interviews from the TV team. Have a great weekend and goodbye for now.